And we're live from the News Hub at Adesawe. This is News 360. We're streaming worldwide on the internet via 3news.com. My name is Solis Rose Porter. And my name is Alfred Okanse. Coming up in the bulletin tonight. News 360 headlines is brought to you by... Interparty Coalition for National Sovereignty vows to oppose the Ghana-U.S. Military Cooperation Agreement despite the President's endorsement. And in health, expectant mothers at Asama in the Citrus South District of the Ashanti region dread giving birth at the SDA hospital due to lack of mother and child health care equipment. And in business tonight, government signs $50 million Jamestown fishing port complex agreement with China. And on the international front, Israeli forces shoot dead seven Palestinians as protests near Gaza border continue. Details of these and many more, including sports and entertainment on News 360 tonight in the next 60 minutes. Feel free to join us with your thoughts, views, comments and opinions tonight here on News 360. Straight to our first story this evening where the Interparty Coalition for National Sovereignty, as a group of opposition parties, they vowed to oppose the Ghana-U.S. Military Cooperation Agreement despite the President's assurance that the deal does not seek to establish a military base. In Ghana, the coalition at the news conference in Accra asked the president to stop being defiant and take the best decision for Ghana. In a televised address to the nation, President Akufuado debunked assertions that the agreement seeks to establish a military base in Ghana. The president, who broke his silence on the issue after a huge public outcry, emphasized that he will never compromise or sell the sovereignty of Ghana under any circumstance, describing critics of the deal as hypocrites. But the Interparty Coalition for National Sovereignty says the president should stop being defiant and lead Ghana. We refuse to be intimidated by the rapaging attacks of the president and his assigns on opponents of the military base in Ghana. If the president hopes to win the argument through fear mongering and bullying, that is his choice, but we will stand up to him and any vigilante groups the authorities will unleash to perpetuate violence on those opposed to the military base in Ghana. A member of the coalition and general secretary of the National Democratic Congress insists the coalition wants the withdrawal of the agreement. It is up to the leadership of the country whether they are interested in total withdrawal or they are interested in the amendment that will address the concerns. Withdrawal of the agreement. It is up to the leadership of the country whether they are interested in total withdrawal or they are interested in the amendment that will address the concerns we have raised. We have not asked, of, asked for any agreement. They want to bring an agreement, and we think that it contains something that is bad. So either you throw the whole thing away, or you remove the part that are objectionable. It will all serve our interests. Parliament on March 23 ratified the agreement between the two governments, which provides unimpeded access to and use of agreed facilities and areas to United States forces, United States contractors and others as mutually agreed. Now, regarding this much talked about agreement, let's take a look at uh, some of the key areas that is in, in trying to end this agreement. These are some of the highlights. And first of all, Ghana is to grant the U.S. military and civilian personnel privileges, tax exemptions and immunities. Now, the U.S. contractors are not liable to pay tax on similar charge that personnel of the U.S. military can enter and exit Ghana using ID card or individual travel 
orders. And uh, also, the U.S. is to use Ghana as a base to facilitate military training, staging, and deployment of U.S. forces, aircraft refueling and landing, and recovery of aircraft. Now, Ghana is mandated to provide unimpeded access to and the use of agreed facilities and areas to U.S. forces, contractors, and staff. Now, the Ghana is also to provide access to and use of its runway meeting requirements of U.S. forces. And I think regarding this particular area, we're looking at the fact that people are not very happy with the idea of unimpeded access. And um, the justification for this entire agreement basically lies in these areas. Now, the parties justify the approval of the document to ensure access to and the use of the agreed facilities and areas by U.S. forces within Ghana. Now, they're also to ensure enhanced and fruitful security cooperation between Ghana and the U.S. Now, this is also to ensure the two countries cooperate more in the area of exchange of information and finally also to manage the conduct of joint operations to combat the threat of terrorism and other challenges in West Africa. So these are some of the main reasons why this agreement is in existence in the first place. We don't know what you think about that but uh, I'll hand over to Alfredo Kansi to uh, go Absolutely. Ahead. Uh, and, uh, Solis, thank you very much for that brief uh, for, for that document. It's, it's a huge I mean, agreement. We can say it all but I've been joining studio by a former United Nations Senior Governance Advisor, uh, Professor Bafo Ajibandia. Uh, he's joined us in studio to help us understand this. And uh, being in that capacity as a former Governance Advisor to the United Nations. Prof, thank you so much for making it to join us in studio uh, uh, th th this evening. There are, after the President's statement yes, uh, or address yesterday, the conversation has not been so much about the substance of what he said. It's been about the form in which it came. I want to find out your thoughts about this. That did this form overshadow the substance so much to take away the focus on some of the things that were in there? To a large extent, yes, because most of the comments today has been on the theatrical, so to speak, of, uh, of the event, which is to say the demeanor, his tone, and someone has beautifully analyzed uh, his communication uh, uh, skills uh, of yesterday. So it seems to me that uh, uh, first of all, the central message or the purpose of the message may have been missed because the idea was to educate the people uh, on this agreement, hopefully to cool down tempers for people to begin to understand perhaps the reality of this agreement. But I think to some extent that was not successful because the focus has not been on the substance of his presentation but more on the, on the gestures and other things that he did. So, so now let's go into the substance. Did he... Exactly address your concerns about this agreement prior to yesterday? <laughs> well, I, my concerns have been stated already publicly. Mm -hmm. I, I did put an article in the graphic of last Thursday mm -hmm. and expressed my, my, my own uh, concerns about this. But I stated categorically that it is not true that the sovereignty of this country has been sold by this agreement. Right. But I made the point that for sure, some compromises have been made. And that is true in almost all arrangements or agreements between nations, especially between the powerful nations and the smaller so nations. we shouldn't have expected fairness in the sense of the word. Inherently, in, in, yes, in, in because agreement. the person who's coming to you is coming with a, a, a greater largey, so to speak. And you are looking for something that you don't have the means to get. Normally, we want equity. Sovereignty gives equity to nations. Uh, absolutely. I mean, exactly. so if the principle of equity is fundamental mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. diplomatic negotiations or relations, why then, you know, relegate it or, or why then you you know, w w w want to push it in, in going into an agreement like this with the United States? I mean, despite the fact that they might be the superpowers or, or the big nations, equity is equity. Equity is equity, I agree. But if two parties are negotiating, and one has power, and power not just military power, but economic power and greater political influence, and the other one does not have that, certainly it will be difficult to attain equity. And that's where the problem is. And this is true with almost all arrangements mm -hmm. between imperial countries, the United States, Russia, China, and the European countries. Whenever they are engaging the smaller countries, this has been part of the problem. So we see we have a responsibility
to sharpen our own negotiation skills mm -hmm. and also to find a way to mitigate right. some of the issues that we face because some of the problems that we face can be met without necessarily resorting to, to these external powers. Because once you get yourself involved with these external powers, look, if we are going to meet the Chinese today to get to that 10 million, 2 million, or 10 billion, as they've been saying, right. mind you, you are going to give up something. True. In the same way, our previous arrangements with the, with the British, we were shortchanged. So I think the challenge is for us to find ways of improving ourselves, making better use of the facilities that we have in terms of a natural endowment so we can get out of this dependency syndrome. So I think that in these arrangements, mm. and by the way, this is not the first time we have been engaging the Americans. Yeah, we all know that goes back. You know, but I've had people, for example, refer to uh, the Vienna Convention of 1963 mm. uh, that gives some immunities to, to yeah. d diplomats. Yes. And juxtapose it to this agreement that the amount of or the number of immunities given to the United States uh, military in this agreement is even far more than what we give we gave to the to, to, to diplomats in that Vienna Convention in 1963 assigned. Well, I don't know the, the, the weight that we place on the Americans, but the fact is that if any nation is engaging another nation, there's a whole lot of protocols, and these protocols are normally guided by the Vienna Convention. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, country to country, our diplomats are in some countries, and we also host some diplomats. So right. these conventions are there to protect the interests of these various countries that are engaging each other. So I think when Americans are engaging you, they want to make sure the citizens, their citizens that they are bringing to your country mm -hmm. are protected in some ways. Just as if we as Ghanaians, we are sending officially a delegation to America for that matter any other country, we seek to protect them whilst they are there. So these conventions are there. Now, if it's a matter of the Americans getting more because they are bringing more people and more materials and the engagement is not an ordinary uh, uh, visit by tourists. <laughs> these yeah, are absolutely. soldiers absolutely. come with equipment, so materials, and these materials will have to use our ports. And then again, because it is ho it, the whole thing is couched within the diplomatic kind of uh, conventions, Language, then yes. whatever material they come with will be under that convention. Prof, final question. Could this deal or this agreement have been better negotiated than what we have now? Certainly, any agreement with any other country can be better managed. But you see, I think the way it is now, uh, I think both sides are entrenched. I think the president certainly uh, feels very strongly about what he's done, mm -hmm. just as those who oppose to this uh, agreement also feel strongly about their position. So I think it's now time for some kind of dialogue. I think the president, as our leader, should take the lead in engaging those opposed to this idea. Because certainly, before the implementation of the agreement, mm. I think there can be room for some discussions Absolutely. with Americans yes. to take care of some Minister of the main concerns that, that people have expressed. I think it's possible. Sure. So I will suggest strongly that the president find a way back door, because you know, <laughs> in diplomacy yeah. or in conflict resolution, we have what you call face saving device. Absolutely. The president cannot step down. It True. will be too sidearm for him to do that. Right. Just as perhaps those who are opposed to him can also uh, no. not step down. Right. So there must be a face saving uh, device that will help the two sides to come to a certain consensus to allow this thing to work. So I think a dialogue at the moment is very important. Prof, I'm extremely grateful that you made the time to join us. Well, you've been pleasure. really busy, but thank you so much for it's the time pleasure. joining us and, and to, to, to educate our viewers on this. Uh, Professor Bafo Ajimendia is a former United Nations Senior Governance Advisor. Joining us in the studio to better uh, explain and understand what the diplomatic language is about this particular agreement and whether we could have done it better. And I must say that the Vienna Convention was in 1961 instead, I said 1963, but the gist of that correction. But the defense minister has also stated that there has to be a note verbal you know, issued before the execution of the details of this agreement. So we'll further discuss this as uh, the days go by. But the debate on the security cooperation agreement between the United uh, States and Ghana seems not to be ending any time soon, even after the president has assured no military base will be established 
While some agree with the president on his position, others have contrary views, insisting the president is ill-informed. Well, Godfrey Tanam has the rest of the story. The U.S.-Ghana Military Cooperation Agreement has took several interpretations among the sections of Ghanaians. The position of many commentators has been considered partisan and not reflecting the substance of the agreement. The president's address was expected to bring finality to the debate, but it appears that will not be the case. A group of opposition parties, the Interparty Coalition for National Sovereignty, will not back down on demands for the withdrawal of the agreement. Dean of Academic Affairs Ghana Armed Forces Command and Staff College, Professor Vladimir Kridanso says, even though he does not support some portions of the agreement, the posture of members of parliament worsened the controversy. Some of the things are bad for Ghana, and I've said it openly, I won't hide it, and I have the right to say so. Why wouldn't they say so over there and say, what is bad about it? Because if I were in parliament, then I would say, oh, clause 3, A, it's all clause 5, A. can we change it? Normally, when you do it, you go back to the Americans. This is what parliament is saying. This is the new document. Can we, so we keep on discussing and we have, until we have what is good for Ghana. Uh, is parliament now telling us that what they have done is so good uh, by walking away and what not and what not and by passing this, they've done service to the reason for which we voted them there. He affirmed the president's position that the agreement between the two countries has nothing to do with the establishment of a military base. Don't tell lies about American base. A base is a huge thing. As I'm telling you, the South Korean base is 240,000 Americans. Manila is West, Germany. And wherever they are, people protest. In Germany, they have been protests. They said, go away. Even in uh, Manila, the president is saying they should leave. In Okina, in uh, uh, Japan, uh, some problems came. The Americans misconducted themselves. But because of the clause that they couldn't be tried in, say, Japan, uh, the Japanese were annoyed. Security and safety expert Adam Bona said the agreement falls under the last category of a military base. When you hear military base, there are three levels. The first level is called the main operative military base. The second one is the forward transit, uh, you know, base kind of thing. The third one is a cooperative security location. In our case, the third one is what we have. The, the main military uh, base usually has permanent staff. In our case, it is a cooperative security location, and that, per definition, in terms of military, it's not supposed to have permanent security or officers you know, on the ground. They come in to do what they have to do and they leave. But managing editor of the inside newspaper, Kwesi Pratt Jr., who has been vocal since the agreement was made public, is of the view the president failed to address the substance of the matter and disagreed the agreement had nothing to do with the military base. Military terminology is not the monopoly of our president. Everybody can Google and find out what a military base is. Everybody can use the Oxford English Learner's Dictionary to find out what the military base is. So we don't need someone from our president to be able to determine whether what is going to happen here is a military base or not. It is certainly a military base. He insisted it is a bad agreement since the U.S. military has no restrictions in accessing facilities in the country. Now, an MTN video report this evening, Tadi Clement, our citizen journalist, brings this report from the Ankaria market in the Ashanti region. I am standing just in the heart of Ankaria market, and citizens and market women and buyers come here to buy a lot from the market. You can just imagine what implications some of these things would have on their life. Look at waste all over the market. Waste that has been left for days is left here in the heart of the Ankaria market. This, I think, is a wake-up call to the assembly of the Atriman Wabeja district to come and then clear this waste from the market. This is a citizen report. 
from your citizen journalist, Tadi Clement. Well, you can also send your video report via WhatsApp number 0551-433-044, 0551-433-044. Now let's find out what to expect by way of weather for the next 24 hours. The weather report is brought to you by... Well, don't forget that News 360 is live on DSTV Channel 279. We'll be right back with some business news after this. Stay with us. Welcome back to News 360. And uh, let's use some business stories. And the Association of Ghana Industries says the reduction in the policy rates needs to translate into lending rates of the banks. Now, the association believes the Bank of Ghana, um, the action in terms of reforms in the financial industry is in the right direction. Now, this, according to the AGI, will help the finance industry to be more sensitive to the Bank of Ghana policies. The central bank reduced the monetary policy rate by 200 basis points from 20% to 18%. Vice President of the Association of Ghana Industries, Humphrey Ayimdake, lauded the move. He was, however, disappointed the financial sector has not been responsive to reductions in policy rate. AGI has therefore challenged the Bank of Ghana to compel banks to reduce their lending rates following the policy rate cut. Further on, the challenge is to make sure this policy rate reduction translates into lending rates. And that is where the dichotomy of this engagement is. Humphrey Yimdake believes the central bank in reforming the financial sector is key to empower the sector. He stated reforms in terms of good corporate governance within the various industry players, such as insurance companies, microfinance institutions, and the commercial banks, is in the right direction. It's a matter of time. Policy takes time to mature. And therefore, what government is doing, we're giving a full endorsement and we embrace the 18% new policy rate. Ayim Dake was of the view the reforms will ensure effective and efficient operation of the banking and credit systems and supports general economic growth. Now, government has signed an agreement with China for the construction of the Jamestown Fishing Port Complex in Accra. Under the agreement, China will be providing about $50 million for the implementation of the project, which is expected to create about 1,000 job opportunities for the youth in the area. The Jamestown Harbor is one of the oldest landing sites in the country built during the colonial era. The harbor deteriorated and was abandoned despite the community remaining one of the country's fishing hubs. Government intends to revamp the old harbor into a modern fishing port complex. The project, which is in three major parts, comprises of the dredging of about 118,000 cubic meters, harbor basin and shipping channels, the construction of hydraulic structures composed of berths, seawall and breakwater. There will also be the construction of administration, production, and supporting facilities including an office building, kindergarten, trading market, processing area, commercial area, and other production and supporting facilities. The finance minister noted the project will enhance the productivity of the fisher folks in the area. Ghana is currently at a stage in its development trajectory that requires massive investments. Indeed, if we are to achieve this aspiration, there's a need for that critical mass of resources 
uh, to push the economy beyond aid right from the onset of the implementation of strategies to get there. It is in this vein that supports like the one China is committing to Ghana today are especially welcome. The Minister of Fisheries and Aquaculture said the project which is a fulfillment of a campaign promise by the president has come at no better time. This is uh, about the biggest investment that they are going to do in Ghana and I am particularly happy that this is happening in my ministry. We are thankful to God that His Excellency, the President Nanado Danko Akufuado, has committed himself to ensuring that this comes to pass. Construction works is expected to begin next month. And now let's head to the ports where cargo traffic at the Tema and Takradi ports is expected to increase by some 10% by the close of this year. Now the Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Shippers Authority, Benonita Bismarck, who made this known at a news conference in Tema, is confident the new trade facilitation measures rolled out would propel the increase. The Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Shippers Authority, Benonita Bismarck, said the general outlook depicts that without any global economic disruptions, cargo throughput for imports will also increase. She explained that in 2016, imports increased by 17.5%, exports by 10.9%, and transit trade by 24.6%. Cargo traffic shot up by 15.1 million metric tons in 2015 to 21.5 million metric tons last year. Benonita Bismarck said the high rate of growth volumes for 2017 was as a result of good performance in the third and fourth quarters and the trade facilitation programs, including a paperless system of goose clearance. She advocated for more stakeholders' involvement in the operations to enable it to rake in more revenue. Now, the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia, has filed his tax returns for the year 2017, urging ministers and other government appointees to do same. The Ghana Revenue Authority is expected to mobilize 39.8 billion cities this year. The 2015 Income Tax Regulation 896 compels taxpayers to file their annual tax returns with the GRA. In the Revenue Administration Act, citizens are also to file their tax returns four months into the new year. To comply with these provisions, the Vice President, together with the Finance Minister, filed their 2017 tax returns. The Vice President again launched this year's Tax and Good Governance Week celebrations to encourage voluntary compliance among taxpayers. The Vice President, Dr. Mohamed Baumia, directed ministers and other government appointees to file their tax returns. To set good examples, all ministers of state, government appointees and public officials should ensure that they file their tax returns before the deadline of April 30th, 2018. In fact, Commissioner General, I would like to challenge you that by the time we get to next year, where we have to file our taxes by the end of April 30th, we want to see a mobile app which we can have on our phones and be able to file our taxes just on our mobile phones and pay them on our mobile apps without having to step into any office. He also praised the GRA for raising more than 30 billion CDs in revenue last year. Last year, we really were in a bind by May. We were very, very worried about whether we would meet our revenue targets. Uh, but by some dint of magic and hard work and perseverance, I think that we virtually met our target because you were only short by 3%, which I hope you will make up this year. The Minister of Finance, Ken Oforiata, highlighted other measures to mobilize taxes for economic growth. I believe we are collecting about 3.5 billion CDs um, through the services, uh, meaning that there's clearly four times more um, that we can collect, uh, which would change the destiny of our country. Commissioner General of GRE, Emmanuel Kofinti, asked businesses to file their taxes by the end of April to avert prosecution. He outlined new measures to track the payment of taxes. Effective 1st April 2018, one cannot do business 
with some organizations, such as the Driver Vehicle and Licensing Authority, DVLA, Passport Office, GRA ourselves, and other institutions without a TIN number. The 2018 Tax and Good Governance Week celebration is on the theme, Filing Your Tax Returns, Your Civic Responsibility. Now the Vice President, Dr. Mahmoudou Bamiya, says government will be rolling out more reforms to expand the insurance market to boost investor confidence. He made the observation when a delegation from the Allianz Insurance called on him at the Jubilee House in Accra. Of the Discussion <laughs> centered on improvements and expansion of the insurance market in Ghana. They also deliberated on maintaining fiscal discipline and macroeconomic stability to promote business growth. The delegation from Alliance is determined to invest about 2 trillion euros in the capital markets of Ghana. Vice President Dr. Mohamed Baumia expressed government commitment to formalize the economy to make it business friendly. Uh, banks can lend more money because then you can set up credit reference agencies because everybody is uniquely identified. You can use property as collateral because every property is uniquely identified and the title can be checked and all of that. So it creates a whole new platform for economic activity. Uh, so it's something that we are, we are re really working on uh, apart from other areas of infrastructure, railway development, roads, sanitation, and so on. Global Chief Operations Officer for Alliance, Dr. Christoph Masha, lauded government in facilitating the acquisition of alliances to operate in Ghana. We want to start, or we have now got the license end of last year, with your help, uh, for life insurance, and we are now going to start the business also there. So I think this should be also seen as a commitment of Allianz and that Allianz Insurance really wants to expand its focus to Africa and in particular to Ghana. The Chief Executive Officer for Allianz Africa, Dr. Conrad Vrolik, promised the Vice President of More Investment to promote economic growth. We are covering the spectrum essentially from financial inclusion products at sort of one to two set a month all the way to, as Allianz, we also have a very large, one of the largest global corporate and specialty insurance companies uh, and often end up uh, leading on, uh, on, on, for example, energy uh, and other aviation type of contracts. The Allianz Group intends to roll out insurance packages in the aviation sector later in the year. Well, that's all for Business News on News 360 this evening. You can get more business news and other news on our website, www.3news.com. Alfred? Solis, thank you for business. Tonight, President Kofuado says Ghana and Liberia will continue to strengthen and advance the mutual interest of the two countries and the West African sub-region to overcome economic and democratic challenges. The president was speaking at the Jubilee House when he received Liberia President George Weah, who is in the country for a two-day visit. Relations between Ghana and Liberia became stronger when in the 1990s, Ghanaian troops joined ECOMOG to promote peace during the civil war in Liberia. Ghana subsequently hosted Liberian refugees. President Ikufuado praised the people of Liberia for a peaceful election and transition and pledged Ghana's continued support to promote mutual relations and democratic advancement. So there are lots of bonds between us. And today, we have an opportunity in talking together to advance the mutual interests of our peoples, of our region, and of our continent. The world is going through some difficult moments. All kinds of new arrangements are appearing. And we here in the West African region must continue to deepen the contacts, the links, the friendships between us in West Africa so that the challenges of the 21st century, the challenges of rapid economic growth, inclusive economic growth, 
It makes it possible for all our people to be part of the process of development. President Weir was grateful for Ghana's enormous support to Liberia and promised to work towards strengthening relations. Ghana is my home, and we are here not to just come and see you, but we are keen to reassure you that our relationship that we have will be sustained and it will be more strengthening. I'm young. I agree. But uh, you are my big brother, and I hope that you will help Liberia to succeed. Liberia came a long way. And without Ghana, we would not be standing here today. President Weir's visit is also to explore avenues for investment. And now to some health stories and expectant mothers in the Citrus South District of the Ashanti region dread giving birth at the SDA hospital at Asamai. The health facility is severely challenged. Of much concern to them is the single incubator, which is malfunctioning. Established in 1984, the Asaman SDA hospital continues to provide health care to more than 15 communities within and beyond the Sechre South District. The hospital, under the Christian Health Association of Ghana, is also a major referral center. For most expectant mothers, the health facility is not their preference, but have no other choice. This is due to inadequate logistics and personnel. The hospital has only one incubator which does not function properly. We set up some MBU units where we are able to keep some of the preterm babies. The severe ones are however still sent to Confanoche for continuation of care. The X-ray department, for instance, has not been functioning for two years because there is no radiographer to man the facility. Staff at the facility say they are compelled to refer simple cases to other health centers. Daily, we look at 140 clients. That's for the past three years. And there's been a reduction of the OPD attendance. And this is because of the challenges that we do face in our work. Family members share beds with patients on admission. One of the two ambulances the hospital depends on broke down two years ago and has since not been repaired. The remaining ambulance is also used for outreach services because the only official vehicle frequently breaks down. The situation is compounded by poor power supply. The SDA hospital has the capacity to provide health care to more than 1,000 patients a day if the facility is equipped. You're still watching News 360. Don't forget that you can get interactive with us via our various social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, as well as Instagram. We'll be back with you. On the Torch for tonight, seven Palestinians have been killed by Israeli forces during fresh protests on Gaza's border with Israel. A Palestinian health ministry officials have said this Israeli military, that's a military, said troops had opened fire when people attempted to breach the fence on the frontier. A majority of areas outside the capital, Addis Ababa, have had no connectivity for nearly three months now. They include Oromia, Amhara, and the Southern Nations, Nationalities and Peoples regions, which have seen some of the biggest anti-government protests for nearly three years now. Most Ethiopians access internet via their mobile phones. It is not clear why the services were shut in the first place, but the government has long blamed a position activist based in the diaspora of inciting violence and hate speech through popular social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter and WhatsApp. The government has on several occasions shut down the internet in a bid to contain widespread protests that are in part organized online. Internet and telephone services are controlled by only one provider, state-owned Ethio Telecom. Despite being one of Africa's fastest growing economies, internet penetration in Ethiopia remains very low, at just 15%. 
according to the 2017 Freedom of the Net report conducted by U.S.-based Freedom House. The U.S. Treasury has announced sanctions on 24 Russians, including members of President Vladimir Putin's closest circle, his son-in-law, the son of his childhood judo partner, and his former intelligence chief. The hardest hit figure is aluminium tycoon Oleg Deripaska, to whom former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort reportedly offered paywall to give private briefings on the campaign. Russian opposition figure Alexei Navalny has alleged that Deripaska was a middleman for Manafort in transmitting information to the Kremlin. The administration didn't specifically mention Russia's alleged hack of the 2016 U.S. presidential election in explaining the sanctions, instead decreeing a range of Kremlin's operations, including its occupation of Crimea, violence in eastern Ukraine, support for Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, attacks on Western democracies, and malicious cyber activities. Armed robbers blew up the entrances of five banks in central Nigeria's Ofa town with a dynamite. In an operation which lasted for more than an hour, after the close of business, the police are investigating and working with the bank managers to ascertain how much was carted away. The incident has drawn widespread condemnation with graphic pictures of killed policemen and residents posted on social media. The heavily armed gang had attacked the Owode police station where they killed the policemen before raiding the banks within the market area. Police had recovered some of the vehicles stolen during the raid. The police were unable to stop the robbers because they were firing sporadically in a densely populated business district. Such robberies have become regular occurrences in Ofa, Nigeria. The protesters are demanding that refugees be allowed to return to ancestral lands that are now in Israel. But Israel says the militant group Hamas, which dominates Gaza, is staging the rallies in order to launch attacks. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres called on all parties to avoid confrontation and exercise maximum restraint, after 16 people were killed and hundreds other wounded during similar unrest a week ago. Protesters threw stones and firebombs at troops deployed on berms on the Israeli side of the border, according to the Israeli military and multiple attempts were made to break through the border fence. It's now time for us to find out what's trending in the world of entertainment. It's sticking as Ghana awaits the biggest festival of the music industry, Vodafone Ghana Music Awards. In anticipation of the great night, debates on who wins what <coughs> in the 25 competitive categories are heightened. Well, let's find out from music enthusiasts who wins the best new artist of the year. There are some triplets in there. Come music, Kitty and Kim Promise. They're like triplets. So, like splitting them, it's quite tricky. Personally, I think Kim Promise deserves it. Oh yeah, Kwame Eugen, Kwame Eugen. I love Kwame Eugen. And I feel like he's going to be the new artist of the year. The guy is very talented and then I like him. His songs are very beautiful. Um, I think Kim Promise will win. Yeah, his voice and then how he sings, yes. That's why I like him. So Kwame Eugen is very good in terms of his diction and even the flow. It just attracts me, the ladies especially. So I prefer Kwame Eugen because Kwame Eugen's songs are you see, Kiddy doesn't have a lot of songs, you understand? So, so, you all go for Kwame Eugen, Kwame Eugen's songs, because you, Kwame Eugen's songs came and hit before Kiddy and all those people, so I think Kwame Eugen's a Confusion, the cause and confusion, so my baby forget my Indian side. So I guess you're wondering who is going to win new artist of the year. Keep your votes coming through. And of course, don't forget it's Saturday, 14th April at the Accra International Conference Center. Moving on to the next story. Born Nana Kweku Ochridia, award-winning hip life musician Tic Tac, is now known as Tic and is still in his prime after two decades in the music scene. A tip. Oh, Lord, I'm Sometimes I feel like giving up, but the love the show, I feel like giving more. The love the give, I feel like doing more. Tick began his music career while at Laboni Senior High School and released his debut solo album, Philomena, in 1999, which spawned several hits. Okay, 
you look at me, you see that it's been good, you know. I mean, I have, I have been around for two decades and more. Because I started when I was a little boy. So for me, I always say I thank Jehovah God for my life. And of course, for the fact that, you know, I can still say that, yeah, I've released a new single. And at least people can bump to it. So it's good. The Philomena hit maker believes causing positive change in the life of fans through one's works is the greatest award every artist should aim at. Awards are not what I look at, you know. Um, my, my main thing is to, you know, cause positive change in the lives of uh, my listeners. And that, that once I feel that my listeners are bumping to my music, I, I feel that is a great achievement. Because sometimes you win the award, and even, you know, people forget <laughs> as well. The music lasts forever. So what has kept him relevant over the years? What I feel people would like to associate with or people will feel as in lifestyle, that can be there forever. I try to write about things like that. And my inspiration is on a daily basis. You know, I take inspiration from different things, you know. It's not like... It's not one thing that I take inspiration from. It depends. So it can, it can come from different angles. From Philomena to the Pum Pum. So that's a great song. That was very Philomena putting the a new one. A great song, you know. Break I don't song. know about that, but it was song. funny for yeah, me. But you said you believe that someone who was 15 years? Yeah, 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 very young. I mean, 1997, he was just wow. from a secondary okay. school. Yeah, great, stuff. Time. great stuff. Great okay. stuff. Anyway, that's how we wrap up News 360 here. Uh, my name is Solis Rose Courtney. And my name is Alfred Okanse. On behalf of the rest of the team, we say thank you to you. Have a good evening.